want a hand clap of praise. Amen. God bless you on today. Good to see your smiling faces on this morning. Good to see you. Amen. It's a great, it's a great day to be in the land of the living. That's what the, that's what the elders used to say. And, and since I'm getting there, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I choose to say on on this morning. Good good morning, Mount Marine Baptist Church, and, and I'm so glad to see you all uh, more on, on today. I, I want you all to turn again with me to, um, to Luke chapter 18. This is a very familiar passage of scripture, um, and I'm going to read starting at verse 1 through verse 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 five, and we're gonna and we're gonna talk about being being persistent um, on on today. Um, verse one through verse five, chapter eighteen of, of the Gospel of Luke, and, and this is what, and I'm reading from the NIV, and it reads this way: Then Jesus told his disciples a parable, and here's the reason why: to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in a town that kept coming to him with a plea. She says, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care for what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. You may be seated in the house of God. Pray with me. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this day, because clearly this is a day that you have made. And I bless you, Lord God, with all that I am and everything that I have I pray, oh God, that you will just bless my mind and also my tongue. That God, that you will just bless the people with your word that comes from the throne of grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Come on and give the Lord another hand clap of praise, amen. I want to I wanna preach on this topic this morning, now I'm going to get charged up. I want to preach on this topic this morning, turn a yes into a no into a yes. Turning a no and to a yes. Beloved, a person's drive which is, which, which drives them or gets them to a place of success or causes one's failure in careers, relationships, and, and how they treat themselves, it, it shows up in the hunger that they have for what they want to do and that which is in their heart because it's leading them. You see, faith is not just believing. You see, in church folk, they're really good at saying that faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That just means that you believe. But there's something to faith that a lot of folk don't even operate in, and that is putting their faith into action. Because when we look at the Bible, James says in, in chapter 2, verse 17, James, James says, so faith by itself, if it has no works, it is dead. In other words, we can talk about faith until we turn blue in our face. But if we don't practice our faith, if we don't do that which we say we believe in, then that what we say is of no account. But, but then faith says, that then James says, show me your faith without works. And he says, and I will show you my works by my faith. In other words, he says, yes, you talk a good game of faith, but he says, but you don't operate in it. But he says, I'm not going to talk about my faith I'm just going to talk about, or I'm not going to talk about anything. I'm just going to show up and work so that that which I do will point back to my faith. And I know that some of you are saying that prayer changes things, and it does. But after we pray, there's a requirement for all of us to do what the Lord has led us to do. You see, sometimes people, they pray, then they prematurely give up too soon. 
because you, you cannot base your destiny on a negative response of someone else. You, you have to just know in your knower that that which I'm praying for, if I say that I believe that Jesus can heal me, then I've got to do something about it. If I believe that Jesus is going to put me into another position, then I got to do something about it. If I believe that Jesus is going to put me into better relationships, then I have to do something about myself to create those better relationships. So here Jesus, he, he has this conversation with his disciples and all the people that are surrounding them. And Jesus, he comes out first and he says, he says, he says um, that men and women should always pray. Now church folk, we got this because we know that prayer changes things and, and that the prayer of the righteous, it, it avails much. But then Jesus says, but hold up, wait a minute. When you pray, don't forget about staying in the pocket. He, he says, pray, but never give up. Jesus has already provided the disciples on the lesson of prayer and, and how to pray. They had witnessed how Jesus, he fed a 5,000, and it, and it started out with prayer, giving thanks, and then he activates and he works towards the goal of feeding the 5,000. See, Jesus just didn't say, feed the 5,000. He just didn't pray about the 5,000. Jesus, he puts it into action. And there are two character, characters in this parable. And we see the first, the first character is this, this judge. When we look at verse 2, Jesus says there was a certain city. In a certain city, there was a, there was a judge. And look at what Jesus says because he's, because he's taking the people somewhere. He says there's something about the judge because he says the judge did not fear God nor cared anything about the people. He says that the judge did not have a relationship with God, nor did he care about the people. Now, this would have been a showstopper for many people because the judge did not care about God, nor did he care about you. But he says in verse 3, he says the other character is this widow, and this widow, she doesn't give a darn about the judge because she has an issue and she needs a fix. The Bible says that there was a certain wit widow in the city who kept coming to him. And he's a judge. He did not care about God, nor did he care about the people. But it says that the widow, she does not care about what he thinks and how he acts. She just kept going to him. And I would submit that there are people that they, they base their thought and their actions and it's predicated on the person or the group of people that they're going to. You know that you need a raise, but you're, you're afraid of going talking to your manager. Because somebody told you, don't talk to him because he's just mean, he just mean and nasty as all get out. So you stay in your little corner. You don't say anything. You know what you want, but you won't go because that person is not connected with God and he doesn't care about people. And the reason why people are not as successful as they could be is because they allow other people to keep them down. It says that the widow, she kept going to him and she kept saying to him, she kept, she, and watch this, she doesn't ask him anything. She says, give me. She doesn't beg. She doesn't ask. She demands. Christian folk don't like demanding. You know why some of y'all ain't getting the pay that you could be getting? It's because you don't demand. When you know yourself, you, you should be, when you know yourself and, you're, and you are working up to what that standard of self is, then you can go to managers and say, I demand. Because they know your value. And if you know your value, then that, guess what? They just may help you out. But she demanded and she says, give me justice 
because I've got an adversary. She's a widow in that city, and she doesn't allow the judge who doesn't know God nor care about people to keep her from going to him. She has three obstacles. First obstacle is, is that she has to confront a judge who has no regard for God nor her. That would have stopped some people. She's a widow, which presupposes that she needed a male figure, her, her husband, to go before the judge and to speak on her behalf. She doesn't have anyone to, to go and speak on her behalf. Can we go back to the content of the tradition? The tradition was is that the females did not go to the judge. But she says, I don't care about your tradition, judge. I need some help because the adversary is getting on my nerves. But, but, but also her, her, her third obstacle is this, is that she is poor, which means that she does not possess the financial backing to pay a bribe if it was an option. So she's facing an insensitive judge. She has no representation. She has no finances to back her up. And she shows up to deal with the adversary that has called her out. The text doesn't leave us to our, the text just leaves us to our imagination as to who the adversary was and what the adversary was doing. But, but we can deduce from the text by reading the text that the adversary brought her to the judge because he wanted something out of her. And this is how the adversary is. He's a, he's a silent killer, not saying anything, but shows up with the hopes that you lose your joy in your will to fight the good fight of faith. The Greek for the adversary is simply the accuser. And we know from the Bible, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse, verse 8, that we ought to just keep our heads together that we got to keep our cool, we got to keep our calm because the adversary or the devil, he walks about roaring like a lion and he's seeking to, to devour someone who is weak. And she goes before the judge and she says, can you help me out with my adversary? And this stands the reason why the Bible speaks more, hear me, on issues about standing fast and staying connected and enduring more than it does about sin. And I know that there are people that are sin conscious. They think that the Bible is so laced with sin. It talks about sin. It talks about how we have been delivered from sin. It talks about grace. It talks about mercy. But Jesus, he spends a lot of his time talking to people, lifting them up, and telling them in ways of how they could succeed and how they could be steadfast. Sin ain't the issue for most fails. It's the fact that people just give up and quit. Jesus, he says in verse 3, there was a widow. She kept coming and watch what she, she says, give me. I ain't asking this time. Have you ever been in a place that you have been so desperate that you're not so nice about what you need? You demand. Now see, some people, they demand all the time. But she comes before the judge, she says, she says in herself, I'm not thinking about your position because I need something. The widow who, was, who had the issue of blood, she says, I don't care about the crowd because the crowd is trying to keep me out, but I need to touch his hem of his garment. See, see, you have to be desperate sometimes if you want the things that God, in other words, God is telling the people in, the, in this pericope of scripture, how bad do you want it? Some folk don't want it bad enough. That's why, folk, that's why some folk don't have it. It's because they don't want it bad enough. But when you're in the fight for your life and you're about to lose everything that, that you have, the little that you have, being persistent will get you someone's attention. The text says in verse 4, it says, And the judge, he would not for a while, but afterward, he says to himself, 
I don't care about God. Y'all know that. And I don't care about man. And y'all know that. I'm talking about the judge. He kept telling her over and over, she's coming to him about the adversary, and the judge is just simply telling him, I don't care about your God, nor do I care about you. That stops some, but it should not stop all. How many of you right now that if someone told you that I don't care about God and I don't care about you, what would you do? But you keep pushing forward and, and, and do that which God has, has placed on your heart, or would you just shrink back? Well, beloved, I would just suggest that you need to keep pushing forward. Because, see, sometimes people, they will say those kind of things just to test you. Because they know that if you push forward, if you go in the pocket with them, even if they have told you that you're not good enough, Passing the test lets them know that you are. I got a friend that's out in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, he worked on me on a, on a project starting in like 2005. He came in an entry level, and this dude was like hungry as all get out. He didn't have a college degree, but he was just hungry. And here we are 20 years later. He, he has a Ph.D., and he's out in Huntsville. But he, well, watch this. He goes, to, he goes to management one day and he tells manager, I want this position. I want this position. And manager says, no, you're not qualified for it. He doesn't fight, he doesn't fight but he goes into the pocket and he does what he needs to do to get the position. He has to leave the company, go to another company to get the position. Now, after a couple of years, he, he, he's succeeding, he's, he's matriculating, and he gets to this place, and now he's a government person instead of a contractor. But if he would have listened to the manager that told him that he was not good enough, he would have still been in that entry-level position. I'm trying to help some people out, because you're not what they say you are. And you need to get it into your mind that you are better than what people are saying to you about you. Because, see, people are putting into your, into your spirit that you cannot go anywhere, that you cannot do anything. But let me help you out real quick. The devil is a liar. So the judge, he, he holds his ground. He holds his ground, and, and she keeps coming back. She keeps coming back. She doesn't let the judge stop her. This old adage of, if you don't first succeed, what do you do? We first succeed, we, we don't, if we mess it up, we just quit, right? Jesus was just simply saying, if you don't succeed the first time, come on, y'all, come back, don't give up. Don't look them in the eyes. Don't even think about what they're saying. you got to think about you and what God has put into your heart. Sometimes you have to dial it in, hold it back to see if a person is really hungry or not. Sometimes this is what you have to do. You have to sometimes put people to the test, right? Because Jesus says, if you're hungry enough, you'll become blessed. If you're thirsty enough, you, you'll be blessed. And I know that sometimes folk, they look back and say, well, how, how did she get to where she is? It's because she was hungry. You're in the same position, but the, but the other person is not hungry. But managers no, normally choose folk, not so much that are qualified, but they're looking for some qualified, thirsty folk. Do we have any people in the house of God today that are, that, are, that, that are just thirsty? I like, you know, sometimes I just tell people, you know what, because I don't tell people all of my business. I don't tell people exactly where I'm really going because sometimes you can't let your enemy know where you're going because your enemy will mess up. But sometimes, you know, I just like looking at somebody's expression when I said, this is what I'm about to do. And they're like, well, you know, but, you know when I was a kid, right, um, when I was a kid, about 12 or 13, about 13 years old, um, I, I was washing dishes, and, and, and my good buddy, Mel, who passed away a couple um, years ago, you know, he, he, he worked in a restaurant, and I used to wash, his, to wash the dishes. And, uh, and so, so, so 
I, um, I told my brothers, I said, hey, you know, for Christmas, I'm going to, um, to, to buy a motorcycle. Not a used motorcycle, but a brand new motorcycle. And my brothers, they just laughed. They just rolled all over the floor. They were just laughing like I was the fool. They laughed. What they didn't know was that I had already put this Honda XR70 on layaway, brand new at the Honda house in Charlottesville. But when, but when Christmas came, uh, Mel, he put it in his van and brought it to my house, and I had this brand new um, Honda XR75, and, and my brothers, and I'm, and I'm taking it over to Johnson School, riding up and down the hills, and my brothers, they're running behind me, riding on something that they did not believe that I could do. And this is how people are treating some of y'all. They're saying, no, you cannot do it. No, you cannot have it. No, you will not get there. But every now and then, you got to prove people by the persistency that God has placed inside of your heart. Do we have any people who knows exactly what I'm talking about? You got to have persistency in your mind and also your heart. But then Jesus says in verse 5, you know, sometimes I get on folks' nerves. Say amen. amen. I will wear you out if God has dropped something in my spirit to make it happen. I will wear you out. Matter of fact, this is how you ought to be rolling on your job, wearing folk out. Matter of fact, a co-worker said, man, why don't you slow down, man? You're making me look bad. Friday. It's like, man, slow down, man. You're, you're making me, man. I'm just doing what I do. And I'm, not, and I'm not slowing down to make you look good. But the judge says something because she comes back and she believes that God is going to make something work in her life. She's putting the prayer into operation. And because she is persistent, the judge says, because this widow is troubling me. She's getting on my I don't want to bother him because he may be busy I don't want to call her up because she may not pick up the phone and that kind of stinking thinking will get you nowhere sometimes you just got to be like whatever may come this is what I'm going to do he says he says um She's troubling me if I don't avenge her. And he says, and if I don't do anything about it, watch what she says. The text says, he says that she's going to keep on coming back. She's going to keep on coming back. Do we have any coming back people in the house of God on today? Or you just go one time and somebody tells you no and you just stop. Don't you know that sometimes God's no it's not a denial. It's just to see whether or not you are hungry enough for it. Some people will say no the first time. Because watch this. If you prematurely give a yes to a person that's not capable nor ready for it, you are wasting your time. But then Jesus says in verse 6, and we're, all, we're almost there. Jesus says, listen, you have, you have, you have heard the parable. You, you've heard about the judge. He doesn't care about God. That's how the world operates. He says, listen, how, look at how the world operates. The world operates on the principle of whether or not you want it bad enough. And he says the same thing should apply to the church. Because churches don't grow just because we show up. Churches grow when we are hungry for it. Jesus says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. And when we do the right thing by God and we show God, God, I know what you have dropped in my spirit. I'm going to pray about it, but I'm not just going to pray about it and sit down on you. I'm going to get up and do something about it. He says, because the widow troubles me, Jesus says, he says, the same thing will be like this towards the Christian. He says... He says, pay attention to how the judge operates in the world. But then in verse 7, and we're almost there, it says, and will not God? Because see, God ain't deaf. God has not forgotten about any of you. 
He has not. It just means that he's not responding the way in which we want him to respond. God has not turned us off. But maybe, just maybe, God is waiting to see whether or not you really want it bad enough. But then in verse 8, he says, he says this, and I want to help some people out with this last verse, and, and then I'm going to shut down, is that, is that Jesus says, you have to be the same way as the widow. You just can't be so spiritually minded that you don't put your actions to work. You just can't say that I am saved, Holy Ghost filled, and sanctified, but don't do anything to activate your faith. You just can't pray about something and then don't do anything about it. When I was in seminary school, I was told, or we were told, it's like, like um, prayer is not only in the verbal, but prayer is also in action. Which means that my action is just an, ex it's just an extension of the verbal prayer that I have lifted up to God. But then Jesus says in verse 8, and we're there, he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily if you just believe that God can and that God will. If you pray and if you believe, God can. Now, when Jesus fed the 5,000 with five barley loaves and two fish, guess what he does? He looks up to heaven, he prays over the food, then he just puts it into action. And God grows that which he has prayed for. But he says, nevertheless, and here it is. He says, when Jesus returns, he's not going to be really looking at who did what, who sinned in what, whether or not you snuck, snuck through a door, whether or not you were partying like a, like a rock star, he's not going to be looking for none of that. He's going to be looking for whether or not you got faith. How does Jesus know that one has faith? One person would say, well, you know, I come to church every Sunday. That ought to count for something. But Jesus said, no. You have church every Sunday, but you won't push yourself to the next level. You don't have the faith. Well, you know, um, I do my best in visiting folk that are sick and shut in, and Jesus is like, no, that's, that, that's still not enough. Because, see, you won't push yourself and do something that you have never done before. See, see, faith is not doing what I've always done. It doesn't take faith for me to open the door of my house because I do it every day. It doesn't take faith for me to drive from here back to Fluvanny County because I know the route. But it takes faith for me to do something that I have never done before. So when Jesus Christ comes, will he find faith on the earth? And all that Jesus was putting out, and I'm going to surmise right here, is that all that God wants for us is to be bold in who we are. We, we, we should be so bold that people are like, man, I like that Christian right there, because that is a bold kind of Christian. This Christian, he, he or she is so bold that when they show up on the job, they know for a fact that they're going to be able to, what, count on him and count on her because they're not going to shrink back if somebody shows up and says something that's going to cause them not to do anything. And this is what God wants for his people. He wants his people to be able to turn a no into a yes. Say with me real quick. Turn a no into a yes. Say it one more time. Turn a no into a yes. One more time. Turn a, turn a no into a yes. So when you go to your job next when you go to your job next week and somebody tell you no, you can say within yourself, well the devil is a liar because I don't take no, I don't take no for an answer. Okay. So Thursday I was at the church and I was up here for about five hours. That's why you got the 
this uh, the, the the video up here now, and uh, and I'm and I'm calling up um, um, this company that does the software that we've been using for years. And I'm calling and I'm talking to them and I'm talking to this techie on the phone and, and he's like, and I'm rolling my eyes because I'm like, this joker don't even know what he's talking about. And it's like, no, we can't do it. He says, and he's getting paid to, he's, pay, he's getting paid to tell me yes or no. And I got tired of listening to him. I said, thank you, sir. You've helped me out a lot. Click, he did not help me out. But what I did not do I did not take his no, because I said, self, there is a way. And after about five hours of Googling, messing it up, turning it all over again, guess what, y'all? Turn a no into a yes. That's, that's, that's how we do it. We, this, is, this, is, this is life. This is, that's it. This is, see, 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 young folk, I, I'm, I'm trying to help the young folk. Uh, y'all already there, elders. But y'all young folk, y'all got to get it into your head. People are looking for people with pushback. Y'all got that right. Managers are looking for people with pushback. I know you told me this, but no, that's not, that's, that's not how we're going do this no 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 sir no there's a there, there's a better way change the person's mind just because a person tell you one thing it doesn't mean that they're going to stay with it but you got to do something to change their mind come on father we thank you lord god and we just bless your holy name for all that you are in our lives lord god give us lord god the courage to go boldly before your throne of grace so that we can receive grace and mercy in jesus christ